Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video we're going to take a look at 15 tips and tricks for working with shapes in Excel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future videos in Excel like this one. Now let's get started. Excel has a text box shape, so this allows us to input some text into a rectangular shape. So if we go up to the Insert tab and Shapes, then under the basic shapes, we have a text box. And we can add that into our sheet. And that's going to allow us to add some text into our rectangle. But it actually turns out that you don't need to use the text box shape. We can add text into pretty much any shape. So let's go up to the Insert tab and Shapes. And let's try out an arrow. And if you double click on the shape, then that's going to allow you to enter text just like a text box. If you create a shape and you decide you need to change that shape, it's pretty easy to do that. You don't need to delete it and start again. You can select your shape and go up to the Shape Format tab. And there's an option to edit shapes and you can change your shape from there. So let's maybe change the direction of our arrow, select that, and now we have a different shape. If you want to change the size of your shape without distorting the proportion, then you can do that by locking the aspect ratio of the shape. So normally when you try and resize a shape, you're going to distort the proportion in some way. But if you hold the shift key when you're doing that, then that's going to lock the aspect ratio and keep the proportion of your shape. Now you can also do that by right clicking on the shape and going to size and properties. And that's going to open up this format shape menu. And there's an option here to lock the aspect ratio. So now whenever you try and resize the shape, it's always going to stay in proportion. We can add multiple columns to our shapes. So right now this text right here appears in one column in our shape. And we can change that by right clicking on the shape and going to size and properties. And if we scroll down to the bottom there, there's an option for columns. And right now we've just got a single column. Let's change that to two and see what happens. And if we take a look at our shape, you can see that the text now goes down a single column and then spills over into the second column. Let's check out three columns. So here we go. Our text starts in the first column, spills into the second column, and then into the third column. If you want to add multiple shapes, then the process can be a bit tedious. So if we go up to the Insert tab, and select a shape and let's say we want to add a bunch of rectangles after we draw our first rectangle to draw our second rectangle we're going to need to go back up to the insert tab and select the rectangle again and repeat that but an easier way to do that would be to go up to the insert tab and choose our shape and this time we can right click on it and lock the drawing mode and that way we're going to be able to quickly draw a lot of the same shape. And once we're done, we can press escape and that's going to exit the drawing mode and we're back to regular Excel usage. If you want to make changes to more than one shape at a time, then you're going to need to select multiple shapes. And you can do that by holding either the shift key while selecting or the control key. But if you have a lot of shapes that you want to select, then a quicker way is to just select the first shape and then press Control A and that's going to select all the shapes. And if you want to select all the shapes but one or two, then you can hold Control and deselect certain shapes. And then that way you can make changes like changing the color. So let's change the fill for some of these. So selecting multiple shapes is a lot easier if you select the first one and then press Control A. You can also add dynamic content into a shape instead of just static text. So we can do that by selecting our shape and then going up to the formula bar. And if we press equals, we can reference any cell in our workbook. 
and press enter. And then that value in the cell is going to display in our shape. And when the value in that cell updates, it's also going to update inside our shape. So here we've got a hard-coded value, but this could be a formula that generates any calculated value. And this is a great technique for creating dashboards and prominently displaying key values in your dashboards. You can use connectors to connect various shapes together. So if we go up to the Insert tab and choose Shapes, then we can connect shapes with most of the items in the Lines section here. So for example, let's choose this, the Elbow Double Arrow Connector. And if we add that into our workbook, then we can connect it to various points on our rectangle here or our triangle. And once they're connected, then the connector is going to move and adjust with the position of those shapes. By default, shapes are going to move or resize when you move or resize your workbook. So for example, if we resize this column, then our shape is going to get distorted. And if we insert a column here, then our shape's going to move over. We can change how this happens if we right click on our shape and go into size and properties. And in the properties section right now, we're on move and size with cells. We also have the option to move, but don't size with cells. So if we select that, then when we change our column widths, our shape isn't affected. But if we insert columns, then our shape is still gonna move. And the other option here is don't move or size with any cells. And when you select that, our shape's not gonna be affected by resizing columns. And it's not gonna move when we insert columns either. The easiest way to align your shapes is using Snap to Grid. So to do that, you can select a shape and go up to the Shape Format tab and under Align, there's the option to Snap to Grid. If you select that, then when you move or resize a shape, it's going to snap to the worksheet grid. And that way you can easily align your shapes together. And let's just go back to align and turn that off. A quick way to access the snap to grid feature is to hold the alt key when you're sizing or removing a shape. So if I hold the alt key and select this shape, you can see it's still snapping to grid. If I don't hold the alt key, you can see it doesn't snap to the grid anymore. And same with resizing. So if I hold Alt, it's going to resize it to the grid lines. So to precisely align your shapes, it's easiest to use Snap to Grid. And the quickest way to do that is by holding the Alt key when you're moving or resizing your shapes. By default, shapes are printable objects. So if you try and print your worksheet, then it's going to show up in that print. So if we go to the File tab right now and go to Print, we'll see a Print Preview. And you can see those two shapes there. Let's go back. If you don't want a shape to show up when you're printing, you can change that. So if you right-click on the shape and go to Size and Properties, there's an option here to print the object if you uncheck that then it's not going to show up in your print. So let's go to the File tab and preview our print. And we can see that that shape is, doesn't appear there, and we just see our other shape down here. It's possible to protect your shapes so that you can't move, resize, or edit them in any way. So to do that, we can go up to the Review tab and Protect Sheet. And that's going to give us the option to allow users to perform certain actions like format cells or format columns, etc. So we might want to give our user the ability to manipulate this sheet in all the ways except for editing the objects. And those are the shapes in our sheet. And now if we press OK, we won't be able to 
interact with those shapes, but we can still select things in our sheet. But by default, we won't actually be able to type anything in our sheet or make any changes. So let's just unprotect our sheet. What we might also want to do is select the entire worksheet and right click and format cells. And there's a tab here for protection. So by default, all cells will be locked when you protect your sheet. Let's uncheck that so we can use our worksheet and press OK. And now if we protect our sheet again, and leave edit objects unchecked. Then we can use our worksheet like normal, but this way we won't be able to edit our shapes at all. Now, if you want to have one shape that you can edit or move or resize, you can do that. Let's just unprotect our sheet again. And you can select that shape. And if you right click, and go to size and properties. There's an, uh, an option here for locked. And by default for shapes, that's enabled. If you uncheck that, then when you protect your sheet, that's going to not be protected or locked. But the other shape here is. So that's how you can protect shapes in your sheets. If you spend a lot of time customizing the format and settings of your shapes, then what you might want to do is set a default shape. So let's maybe format our shape a little bit. Let's fill it with some green and maybe change the outline. And if we always want our shapes to be formatted like this, what we can do is right click on the shape and set as default shape. And that way, whenever we add a new shape into our sheet, then it's gonna get that same formatting and settings. It's possible to hide shapes. So we can do that by selecting any shape and going up to the shape format tab and opening the selection pane. And in the selection pane, we have a list of all our shapes in that sheet. And each shape has this little eye icon. And actually, if you click on the eye, it's gonna close the eye and turn the shape into an invisible shape. We can click on that icon again to bring our shape back to visible. And we can do that for any shape. So that's how you can temporarily hide a shape. You don't have to delete them, you can just hide them. With text inside a shape, we can wrap the text or resize the shape to fit the text or also allow the text to overflow outside the shape. So to do any of those, we can right click and go to size and properties. And for example, wrap text in shape is on by default. We can remove that and our text won't wrap. If we decrease the size a little bit here, then we can resize the shape to fit the text. And let's resize that again. And we can also just allow the text overflow from the shape. So some of the text here doesn't quite fit and it just flows out of the shape there. Want more awesome Excel tips? Then sign up for my Excel newsletter. So the link for that is in the description below this video. When you sign up for the newsletter, I'll send you a free copy of my Excel tips ebook. And I'll also send you a free copy of my mega book of Excel keyboard shortcuts and my ultimate guide to VLOOKUP. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me out by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to this channel if you haven't already done so. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.